Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into a 10th Summer 2024 update from Gals Weather Feed. So here we go again, time to bring you more summer data. We are nearly at the end of our summer updates now. Uh, actually, we've just got one more summer update to do for you uh, next week. Then the following week, that's where we will be releasing the Gals Weather Feed summer forecast. So um, yeah, we're virtually at the end of the journey, but we have still got this update and next week's length update to go. And uh, this is going to be an Enso special. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first. A million C was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And you'll be live at 6 p.m. with our Sunday evening live stream. So uh, that's going to be uh, our 10 to 14 there. And we'll include long range in that, uh, of course, as always. And uh, that'll be coming up for you at 6 p.m. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's content. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Thank you so much to. Uh, Richard and Shrine for gift number two. We've got two summer gifts that we've been uh, showing you this season. So, uh, this is a Shrine Brewing um, photo, and it's been uh, developed into uh, a gift by uh, Richard Short. So, thank you so much, hashtag Team Gab, Shrine, and Rich for our gift. Amazing work, both. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much to both. Um, right, okay, so let's have a look then, show. Let's have us have an ENSO update, as I say. Now, we still uh, see some temperature anomalies are current looking in the ENSO region, in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, as of the 10th of May. And you see that the La Nina signal, the cold signal, is beginning to strengthen a little bit now through the eastern and also central part of the equator equatorial Pacific Ocean. Out to the west, we still have an El Nino type signature. But if the CFSB2 is correct, this is going to be a developing La Nina summer, following on, of course, from El Nino. So uh, the CFS has us uh, temperatures on the side, of course, and dates and other periods on the bottom. CFS model has us uh, at or below a uh, half a degree below average which is being port fresh uh, threshold be able to say that you're in a, in a landing year um has a spare by about july time so uh, a developing landing year, uh summer following on from our year is prediction from the cfs and we do see within the uh, sea surface temperature noise that we have got an increasing albeit at uh, uh, moment still quite weak but increasing landing your signature here through the central and eastern portion of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So these summers are all developing La Nina summers following on from El Nino. And our first summer is 1954. Thanks so much for trying sorting these years out for us. First summer is 1954, which was a cold and wet summer. Perhaps one of the worst summers of the 20th century <laughs> with a deep trough of low pressure across uh, the west of Europe. So, really bad summer to start us off. Our next summer was 1964 that had developing La Nina following on from um, El Nino. This one's rather westerly summer. Uh, low pressure to the north, high pressure out in the Atlantic. Quite a mixed and, and uh, unsettled summer with that one. The next summer is 1973. This one was quite a bit better, actually, with an area of above average heights extending in from the Atlantic into western northern york don't think it was a particularly hot summer but uh, it does look a little bit more settled there for 1973. 1983 is our next developing uh, la nina summer following on from el nino this one is a genuinely hot summer uh slow transition of course with this one to a very weak la nina event <coughs> It was already important. So, uh, this contains the first 19 Celsius CT in July. Um, that's a few since then, but the first one, you know, uh, within the CT index is 1983. Very, very hot July, and also a uh, really uh, fungy July in 1983 as well. August 1983, which a lot of people forget, was also quite a hot month. Uh, 1988 flips it all around. This was a rapid transition to La Nina, and this is a very unsettled summer, most, most notably so in July, um, which was a, a really wet and a cool month. But the summer overall, 1988, was pretty poor. 
Maybe like 1995, this is a better summer again. So you see, there is this idea that um, when you've got a developing landing year, it's always bad news for summer prospect. That's not necessarily the case. So you've got 1983, we've also got 1995 in the mix. Again, quite a slow developing uh, landing year. And uh, this is a really long, hot summer. It gets going in the middle of June and carries on right the way to the end of August. Just day after day after day after day of dry, sunny and hot weather. Uh, 1998 is a much more unsettled summer with uh, low pressure away to the east, low pressure out in the Atlantic. So it has a wet June, and then July and August aren't necessarily that wet, but they are a bit mixed. But they're generally just quite cool. Many of the days quite cloudy, overcast, uh, with uh, with coolest temperatures. Quite a cool summer in 1998. 2005 is our next developing uh, La Nina summer. This one, bit of everything really, it has high pressure just out to our west. There are uh, quite a few little heat waves coming down through this summer, but also protracted periods of quite unsettled weather as well. So um, that's a summer that's got something for everybody, really, in 2005. Then, of course, we've got 2007, um, parking the trough right over top of the Northwest Europe in combination with some northern blocking. So <laughs> we don't need to say much more about that particular summer. Uh, one of the worst summers in any of our lifetimes. Uh, flooding rains and, um, and yeah, particularly bad in July, but also June had a lot of rain as well in uh, 2007. Then we've got 2010. This is a classic front-loaded summer. Uh, overall, with an area of high pressure in the Atlantic, a mid-Atlantic ridge, a weaker pressure through here. What you don't get from the analogue is that it does have a very dry, sunny, and pretty hot June, actually, in 2010. There's a deterioration in early July, something cooler and more unsettled. And then by August of 2010, uh, the heavens open. We actually have quite a cold, wet August. So then finally, we've got 2016, um, and this one, again, quite a mixed summer. This was more backloaded, though, uh, with higher pressure to the southwest. That's his also, of course, uh, winds in off the Atlantic. So it starts off in June 2016, quite uh, cool and unsettled. It gradually progresses something drier and hotter as it goes along. As I say, the, the best of the summer is August and even into September, where uh, we get uh, temperatures reaching 34 degrees in September 2016. How hot was that? Okay, let's put it all back together. Let me see how all June's combined are looking with developing La Nina summers. Overall, an anti-cyclonic signal with higher pressure from the Atlantic into western parts of Europe, favouring perhaps uh, quite a dry anti-cyclonic start to summer. But look what happens in, um, in July, or July's combined, sends the high pressure away into the middle of the Atlantic and deepens a trough over and to the east of the coast. So the upshot from that is to turn increasingly unsettled and probably, you know, <laughs> probably quite wet and cool in the July. So then the August bring the high high pressure back though. So all August combined shows that the high pressure sort of gets back closer to us, albeit it's still centered a little bit to the west. That's probably a dry and cool signal for the uh, August with winds coming in from a northwesterly direction. July definitely the worst of the three months uh, there. And this is how all summers combined are looking with developing landing your summers. Again, on average, we get a ridge centered out to the west of the country. Bear in mind, we do see a much more unsettled low pressure dominating mode for the July. And what about those years, but do a rapid transition? So this isn't necessarily all that relevant to this year because we haven't had, up to this point, a rapid transition. But just for interest purposes, um, we've got uh, 1973, 1988, 2007. Those are the three summers that rapidly transition into uh, La Nina following El Nino. Not much difference to your dunes combined, or for those three dunes combined. Um, still anti-cyclonic, really, with high pressure across the door and the west of Europe. But look what happens in the July. This is the three Julys combined, 73, 88, 2007. And you'll not be surprised with that roll call of horror. Well, certainly 88 and 2007, anyway. Um, you'll not be surprised to know that we get this deep 
low. This deep shot sent them right over the top of the So Obviously, a cold and a wet signal for the Julys. And then all August um, combined, when we are having a rapid transition to uh, La Nina, has low pressure away to the north and some higher pressure just to be uh, southwest. So slightly drier signal again for the August. All summers combined, three summers combined, look like that. Overall, it is a, a more unsettled uh, wetter signal with lower pressure through Western Europe. That's primarily down to the three Julys, of course. Again, that's probably not overly relevant, uh, just for interest purposes, as we have not, at this point anyway, uh, had a rapid transition into uh, landing at actually at the moment. It's quite a slow transition, but it's still relatively early days. Right, there we go. That is your 10th and, I suppose, penultimate summer 2024 update. So, what do you make of that one? Pick the bones out of that one, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. No, interesting update, wasn't it? So, um, so yeah, we'll we'll wait and see how it all uh, pans out, of course, with this uh, landing. Uh, does a set of a little bit stronger now. And I think we will transition into landing uh, through this summer. But if it's quite a slow transition, as we see there, there are a few years, 2000. Uh, no, 95 and also 83. Yeah, you know, there are a, a few years there. But I have some really, really hot summers in the mix. So don't necessarily be ruling out a hot summer, even though we've got a, a, a rapid transition, or even though we are going into a, a, a transitioning, you know, landing your summer. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you so much to uh, Richard and also to Shrine for the gift. Thank you so much to hashtag Team Gav, as always. We'll be back with another summer update for you next week but for this one that is all for now thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you a little bit later on for our live stream at 6 p.m we live stream our 10 to 14 day out and we will include some long range in that one as well so uh keep checking back and uh, for this one though, that's all for now and thanks so much